I know that my Redeemer lives, and on that final day of days, his voice shall bid me rise again. Unending joy, unceasing praise, this hope I cherish in my heart, to stand on earth, my flesh restored, and not a stranger, but a friend. Behold my Saviour and my God. We now place on Marie's coffin two symbols of our faith and her faith in God, the book containing the Gospel readings, and the crucifix. In life, Marie cherished the Gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Marie received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray, asking God to bring Marie to himself. Lord, in our grief we turn to you. Are you not the God of love who opened your ears to all? Listen to our prayers for your servant, Marie, whom you have called out of this world. Lead her to your kingdom of light and peace, and count her among the saints in glory. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. We now celebrate our Requiem Mass for the repose of the soul of Marie O'Connor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone, and you're welcome to 
St. Kieran's Church in Cairn Ross for the funeral mass for the happy repose of the soul of Marie O'Connor. I welcome Marie's family members who gather in the church this morning, and I also welcome the many people who join our Mass online today. I would like to extend our sincere sympathy to Marie's brothers, John and Padraig, her nieces and nephews, Paul, Kelly, Connor, Kate, Peter, Emer, Pierce, Barry, and Caitlin, her sisters-in-law, Monique and Kay, and all her relations and friends. We ask God to comfort and console them at this sad time in our lives. We also remember in our Mass this morning, Marie's two sisters, Katrina and Nolene, and we ask God to grant them eternal rest and happiness in heaven as well. And as we prepare to celebrate our Mass and to commend Marie to the goodness, love and mercy of God, we call to mind the times that we have offended God and we ask him for his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, Marie, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Would you please be seated now as we listen to God speaking to us in the readings. The first reading would be read by Peter O'Connor and the second reading by John O'Connor. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honourable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding. This is man's grey hairs, untarnished life, this ripe old age. He is sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding. Or treachery seduces soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade. And the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Coming to the perfection in such short a while, he achieved long life. His soul being pleasing to the Lord. He has taken him quickly from the wickedness around him, yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection, his holy ones, the word of the Lord. Second reading. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Only faith can guarantee the blessings that we hope for or prove the existence of the realities that at present remain unseen. It was for faith that our ancestors were commended. All these died in faith, 
before receiving any of the things that had been promised, but they saw them in the far distance and welcomed them, recognising that they were only strangers and nomads on earth. People who use such terms about themselves make it quite plain that they are in search of their real homeland. They can hardly have meant the country they came from, since they had the opportunity to go back to it, but in fact they were longing for a better homeland, their heavenly homeland. The word of the Lord. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Will you please be seated for a few moments. I welcome you all as we gather this morning to commend Marie to the goodness, love, and mercy of God. We do so in a spirit of faith and hope because these are the sentiments that the prayers and the readings of our Mass convey to all of us. Marie's death has brought a sense of loss and sadness that is felt especially by her own family and by all who knew her. When human words fail, God's word always comes to the rescue. We draw strength from the power of God's word, which offers consolation and comfort.
Oftentimes, life comes to an end before its due time. This is something over which we have little control. The first reading reminds us that length of days is not what makes life honourable, nor number of years the true measure of life. This is true in Marie's case. In the Gospel, we hear Jesus say that there are many rooms in God's house in heaven. Trust in God still, and trust in me, Jesus says. We may feel helpless in the face of death, which puts all our plans and things that we expect to do to one side. Time seems to stand still, but it's a time when our faith is a great support. The faith of the family and the prayerful support of the community are the two best supports at the time of death. Marie was someone who was special to her family, and they were special to her. Her brothers, nephews and nieces, and her two sisters, Nolene and Katrina. Although she lived in Vancouver, Canada, and more recently in Logan, she never lost touch with her native Karen Ross, where she was born and grew up. It is fitting that we celebrate her funeral mass in the church where she was baptised. Through the celebration of the Eucharist, we give thanks to God for Marie's life. The preface of our Mass today will remind us that for God's faithful people, life has changed, not ended. We thank God for the good that Marie did in her lifetime and the many good memories her family will always cherish. Our prayer today is that God will welcome her into eternity, where she will enjoy God's presence forever. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We now join in prayer in the prayer of the faithful. And I invite Amor, Olive, Paul, and Maureen to read the prayers of the faithful as we pray in a special way for Marie and for all her family at this time especially. For all who who bore Marie's passing, especially the members of her family, that they will receive strength to assist them in their sadness of grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for health care providers and all those who look after the sick and housebound. May they continue to reflect the compassion and healing of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray in thanksgiving for all the blessings that came to so many people through the life of Marie. May she now receive the fullness of God's blessings in eternity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the faithful departed, we remember especially Marie's parents, Peter and Mary, and our sisters, Nolene and Katrina, and our long-term partner, Bruce. May they enjoy the promise of eternal happiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, may you support us all the day long till the shadows lengthen and the evening falls and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, Lord, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at last. 
and we ask Mary, the Mother of God, to pray for Marie and for her family as we say together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We now have the offered offer gifts, gifts symbolizing Marie's life and interests are placed on a table in front of the altar, and Kelly will now just say a few brief words about each of the gifts. We wish to present the following gifts. A passport to signify the time Marie spent in Canada and her regular visits back home to Ireland. A plant to represent Marie's love of nature. From her early years spent living on the farm in Carneross to living along the banks of the River Liffey in Luke. A photo album to represent her journey through life. Though her life was short, she had many stories to tell and shared her journey with many people along the way, many of whom cannot be with us here today to celebrate her life. Sorry. Her phone, it kept her connected to her friends and family, both home and in Canada. She mastered WhatsApp, Facebook, and enjoyed shopping on Amazon. And finally, a photo of her late sisters, Nolene and Katrina. They have been reunited in death and will be eternally laid to rest together, a special bond that could not be broken. Bread we bring you, Lord, our bodies labor, in wine we offer you, our spirits breathe, we do not ask you, Lord, who is my neighbor, but stand united now, one in belief. For we have gladly heard your word, your holy word, and now in answer, Lord, our gifts we bring. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Marie, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying 
might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life has changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Kieran and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Tom, our Bishop, Michael, our retired Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember Marie, whom you have called from this world to yourself. 
Grant that she, who was united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and all the deceased members of Marie's family, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. We begin the communion rite at the Mass by praying in the great prayer given by Jesus himself to his church, the Our Father. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We pray in silence for the gift of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us to receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul should be healed.
There were people of all ages gathered round the gable wall. Burden humble men and women, little children that you call. We are gathered here before you, and our hearts are just the same. Filled with joy and such a vision as we praise your name. Golden Rome, Queen of Ireland, all my cares and troubles. As we kneel with love before you, leading up now, my queen of peace. Oh, your message was unspoken, still the truth and silence lies. As we gaze upon your vision and the truth I try to find, here I stand with John the teacher and with Joseph at your side, and I see the Lamb of God on the altar glorified. Golden Rome, Queen of Ireland, all our cares and troubles here as we kneel with love. My queen of peace. Kate will now read a communion reflection. At home at last. There are no words. What can I say? At last her sweet soul winged its way to peace and freedom in the sky where never again will she suffer or cry. It's all a part of God's great plan, which is a mystery to man. We cannot understand his ways, nor can we count our earthly days. But who are we to question and doubt God knoweth well what he's about. He wanted her to go to sleep where only angels a vigil keep. The pain of living grew too great. No longer could she stay and wait. She did not want to leave you, dear, but she had finished her work down here. So she closed her eyes and when she awoke, these are the words the master spoke. Welcome, dear child, you are home at last, and now the burden of living is past. There's work for you in my kingdom, dear, and you are needed and wanted here. So weep not, she's just gone on ahead. Don't think of her as being dead. She's out of sight for a little while, and you'll miss her touch and her little smile. But you know she's safe in the home above, where there is nothing but peace and love. And surely you would not deny her peace, and you're glad that she has found some release. Think of her there as a soul that is free, at home at last, where God wanted her to be.
I would like to thank you all for your attendance and prayerful participation in the Mass this morning for Marie, both here in the church and the many people who joined online as well. I would like to thank Marie's family for the, way, the great way they participated in the funeral Mass today, the readings, the prayers of the faithful, the offertory gifts, and I would like to thank everybody who assisted them and gave them great support. I know the family are very grateful for the tremendous support that they have received from so many people during the past week. It has been a tremendous consolation to them to know that many people were concerned about them and also praying for the repose of the soul of Marie. May her soul and the souls of all the faithfully parted through the mercy of God rest in peace. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, Marie may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. We now have the prayers of final commendation. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Marie. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Marie again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. We pray in silence now for a few moments as Marie's coffin is sprinkled with holy water, symbolizing baptism, a sacrament that Marie received in this church and lived out during her life. And we also use incense to symbolize the prayers that we are offering for Marie going to God on her behalf. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take her to himself. May angels lead her to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Marie in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. 
we give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Marie in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with Marie forever. In peace now let us take Marie to her place of rest in the Holy Family Cemetery in Carneros. And may the angels lead you into paradise, may the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Where sin shall gather in deep peace. 